In this video, we're going to take a look at Charles's Law by examining how the volume of air in a sealed syringe changes with temperature. As you know, Charles's Law states the volume occupied by a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas, assuming, of course, that we maintain constant pressure and a constant amount of gas in the sample. In other words, as the temperature increases, so does the volume of a gas. Conversely, if we lower the temperature, the volume will get smaller. And this is the apparatus we'll be using. We have two identical 20 milliliter glass syringes that have been sealed with a rubber septum. Each syringe holds exactly 10 milliliters of air. Since the plungers are free to move, the pressure of the gas inside the syringe will remain constant. Okay, now I'm going to take one of the syringes and place it into a beaker of boiling water so that the temperature of the gas will rise to 100 degrees Celsius. I'll take the other syringe and place it into a beaker that contains a mixture of ice and salt and water. This particular mixture has a temperature of about negative 6.1 degrees Celsius. After we give our system time to reach thermal equilibrium, we see that the volume of the gas in the syringe placed in the ice-filled bath has dropped to 8.9 milliliters, while the volume of the gas in the syringe that we placed in the boiling water bath has expanded to a volume of 12.5 milliliters. To summarize the data, we see that at the cold temperature, 267 Kelvin, the volume of gas occupied was 8.9 milliliters. At room temperature, 294 Kelvin, the volume was 10 milliliters. And in a boiling water bath at 373 Kelvin, the volume rose to 12.5 milliliters. We can make more sense out of this data if we graph it. Here we plotted the volume of the gas on the vertical axis and the temperature of the gas on the horizontal axis. We see that the three data points appear to lie upon a straight line, which is exactly what is predicted by Charles's law. Now look what happens when we draw the best straight line through the three data points. We get a line that extends back to the origin of the graph. At this point, we have a temperature of zero Kelvin and a volume of zero milliliters. This is one argument for the existence of the concept of absolute zero. There must be some lowest temperature below which we cannot go, because if we did that with a sample of our gas, it would drop to a negative volume, and a negative volume has no physical meaning. So, we have seen that Charles's law correctly predicts the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. We have also seen that Charles's law can be used to help us understand why there must be an absolute zero.